Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Under the Helmet, Episode 3. We are with Eric Spader, TK35811. Eric, how's it going, man? It's going great, man. Nice to meet you, finally. Yeah, man. <laughs> great. This is how, uh, this is how we uh, had to meet in these circumstances. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Soon we'll meet. I'm sure we'll do something together. But that is the one good thing about all this stuff. It's kind of been bringing people together because of the whole situation. Uh, yeah, definitely. Which brings me to my first question. How have you been doing throughout the whole COVID-19 situation with uh, everything? Uh, yeah, pretty good. I actually, um, I put some of my skills to, to the test um, because uh, I actually learned how to sew when I was building my costume. Awesome. And, um, and so since then, I've been, build I've been sewing masks for people. Um, you know, friends of mine on Facebook and stuff, they'll call up and ask for masks and I'll sew them up and send them out to them. So it's cool. actually, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's one of the ways I've just been staying busy because I'm furloughed from work right now. I work at, uh, Legoland, uh, for New York okay. and, um, and yeah, and, and construction has stopped on that. So, um, I'm a control electrician for them and, uh, I've been off. On now on furlough for since the mid middle of March, mm. so um, because obviously you know the park's not yeah. even open yet, so I, I, yeah, so retail, so I know how you feel. You know. I'm sure, yeah. Just got to do the best we can. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so you work Legoland, so I'm guessing you knew about the 501st before you were in the 501st. Uh, yeah. I well, I mean, I'm a new member. Uh, I joined the 501st in September. Uh, late September, and um, but I've known about the 501st for a long time. I actually started, I, I asked my wife this question earlier today. I was like, you know, when, trying to pinpoint, like, when did I know about the 501st? And um, I've always seemed to know about them. I know it was like since the, since the early 2000s and they, cause they started in the, in the mid to late nineties. And, you know, it just, uh, I, I've always known that there was a costuming group out there. Um, but when it really set in for me was I was at a comic con at uh, the Javits Center in New York City, and I saw a bunch of the guys, and they were, you know, dressed up, and they had the five hundred first stuff on, and I was just like, man, that is so cool, I got to do that. So I set a goal, and that's what I did. And uh, and how did that go about? Did you like start talking to our guys? How did you start getting the information for the people who don't know who want to get yeah. into it? How'd you go about the process? Well, for me, it was a little different because um, I had to, uh, I was on the, let's see, let's start over again. I was, I had to, I had to lose about 130 pounds. Wow. So I, yeah. So I actually, um, I, one of my goals in my weight loss was to become a 501st member. And um, so after I, lost that weight and everything I had, I had to have surgery for it. Cause I had a lot of, uh, uh, health issues and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I had surgery. Uh, and one of the things that I wanted to do was become a 501st member as one of the goals. Um, because I, I didn't, I always wanted to dress up as a stormtrooper, but I never felt that I could, you know, and I, I just, you know, cause it's just, for me, it wouldn't look right. You know, yeah, I wasn't, I, I wouldn't, you. you know what I mean? I, it's like, I, I get some of the people that do and great, but I just wouldn't look right. I wouldn't feel right. So, um, so sitting in the, uh, in the bed at the, on the day of my operation, I was like, okay, well, one of the goals is I'm going to build a stormtrooper costume. And that's what I did. So, and the first thing I did was I reached out to the, um, the FISD, the mm -hmm. uh, First Imperial Stormtrooper Detachment, um, they're great. Uh, just a wealth of information and just a great group of people. And um, that's where you go if you want to, you know, build an original TK. And um, I learned a lot of stuff. Learned that there was a huge difference between hero and stunt, which I didn't know mm -hmm. to begin with, you know. But now looking mm -hmm. at it, I see, oh, yeah, well, there's the difference, you know. But, um, so I started there and, uh, you know, I, I looked at all of the different manufacturers and builders and stuff and decided on a costume and bought it and then just dove right in. Never 
sewed anything in my nut in my life. Never, um, never cut any plastic ever with a Dremel. Uh, it, it was all on the fly. And the great thing about it was the FISD and everybody there at the Empire City Garrison, uh, everybody helped. No matter what question I had, when I had it, it was amazing. Yeah, and that's the great thing about everybody being uh, so connected and such a big family. No matter what you ask, you'll get your answer. Yeah, definitely. It was definitely a wealth of information, and I was totally able to go into it confident. And when I was able to submit my pictures to get approval, I had no doubt. You know, I was like, okay, all the guys that said, yes, you're good, go ahead and do it. And I was able to do it. So, oh, yeah, it, was, it, worked, it worked great. So we're working a little backwards here. Mm -hmm. You told me how you got into the fight mode first, but how did you get into Star Wars? Well, um, <laughs> it's funny. I'm, uh, I'm in my mid-40s, so I was very young when the first one came out. I was about a year and a half to two years old. But um, the story I say to all my, uh, you know, because I've been asked that question because you know, I, yeah, I mean, I wear the Star stuff. Wars stuff. If, if you're not in the 501st, my family, my friends, they all ask me, how do, you know, why are you so into this the way you are? And um, the thing I say to them is that, like, you know, think back in a memory. Like, can you remember your oldest memory? Like, your first memory. Can you remember it? Whether it be a picture or, like, you personally. Can you remember that? Like, do you know what it is? I do not, sadly. Okay. So see, well, I do. And I find it amazing that my first memory is of me standing in the back seat of my of my parents' car. I uh, my brother tells me it's an old mobile or something like that. I don't know, 1970s era old mobile sitting on the back hump in the back seat there was this hump that went over the top of the drive shaft, right? And it was in the back seat. So I was standing on that holding on to the back seats, looking through at a drive-in. And my parents had taken us, my brother and I, my brother's 10 years older than me, taken us to see Star Wars at a drive-in. And I see this like picture of me staring up through the window and seeing Chewbacca yelling at this little black remote control car with these two stormtroopers, you know? And so, that's like ingrained in my brain. And ever since then, it's just always been the toys that I got for Christmas, the, the, you know, our first VCR, my parents bought a VCR in the early eighties mm -hmm. and we had a VCR and one movie and that movie was star Wars, <laughs> the original star Wars, you know? So like, thank God for them for doing that because the, you know, but that's where it all began. It was, it was like almost ingrained. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm a little bit younger. I wasn't around to see the originals in the theater, but we always had the VHSs in my house. And yeah, it's, it's really cool. I have, the, I have the VHS. I actually just posted a picture a couple of weeks ago when The Rise of Skywalker came out on Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. I bought that. So I have the, the trilogy, the original trilogy in VHS. The one with the, the half of Darth Vader? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, too. <laughs> and then, well, it's in a clamshell. It's actually the, oh, wow. the case opens. Yeah, it opens up. Yeah, that was the original one. But then I got the trilogy, uh, the prequel trilogy on DVD mm -hmm. and the newer trilogy on Blu ray. So three trilogies, three formats all throughout time. It's pretty cool. <laughs> cool, man. So you said you're a new member. Yes. You've been doing this for. Under a year? <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, since you haven't trooped that much, what is the most rewarding troop that you've done so far? Well, the rewarding troop for me um, would also be, I guess, considered my pinnacle. It would be the, the troop to Jordan because I was actually part of the group that got to go to Amman, Jordan to be at the premiere for Rise of Skywalker. Now, for, uh, for those who don't know, how did that come about for you? Um, 
for for me, it, it was just one regular night. I'm looking at the forum because I get a little text message every time something comes across, you know, for the new troops and everything, just like we all do. And I'm new, so I'm chomping at the bit. I'm always That's looking right. at that thing, you know. And uh, and I saw this really obscure thing come across the the board saying that you know lucasfilm is looking for stormtroopers for you know the rise of skywalker premiere and i literally i had to like i think i like chris said it was just like this weird thing like is this even real is this you know i i don't even know so so i just read through it a couple of times and then i told my wife about it and um at first i was I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to apply for, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I felt like I was too new to even try. No, you never. know, you know, no, but I, but that's how I felt. I was like, well, you know, I, I don't know. No, my costume's not good enough. It's too new. It's too, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. So it's just, it was hard for me to wrap my head around the whole thing. So, uh, but my wife looked at me and she goes, if you don't try, you're stupid. <laughs> like, so, uh, you know, thank God for her. <laughs> oh, that's she, awesome. Man. Uh, yeah. It's quite the opposite. Totally in my uh, corner. Well, it was quite the opposite from curses. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I, <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's right. But, uh, but yeah, so I was like, all right, well, I, I, so I read through it. I did, uh, I got the pictures together that I already, you know, needed to do for a Lucasfilm event and sent them everything they wanted. And, um, and I was like, all right, well, I'll just, you know, I wasn't expecting anything and I'll just throw it against the wall and see what happens. And two weeks later, they were like, yeah, can you be ready to go in two days? Uh, sure. I, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Let, let, <laughs> <laughs> let's do this <laughs> you know i had to find a new suitcase to carry my armor in because my my one box was too big and it just it was like this whole thing it's yeah, crazy so for those of you who don't know when you're dealing with uh lucasfilm or any type of production people they let you know everything last minute <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i found that out quick yeah yeah it was it was crazy and um but on the rewarding side of it was that um you know, it wasn't just going to the premiere. It was going to the country itself. And one of the first uh, troops we did was at a, a hospital for kids with cancer. And um, as a new person, I'd never, that was my first hospital visit. Always a great experience, the press. It, and and from everybody that I've talked to about those, those are always the most rewarding and, and great. And and it was. It was so amazing. But to be able to do that on a troop like that was even way beyond anything I've ever expected to happen. And so you guys did the premiere, the hospital visit. Uh, you guys visited the movie sets as well, right? Yeah, and that was movie location. Yeah, we we did the yeah we went to the locations, but the 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 first day, the day of the premiere, uh, it was led up by um, the hospital visit. Uh, then we went to a mall and went walking around the mall and took pictures in the center of the mall. And then we went to the mall that actually had the movie theater in it. Did another walk around that mall with hundreds of people around snapping pictures and stuff. And then went into a movie theater that they had set up for us to get changed in. That was like our changing room was like a movie theater that they weren't using. Mm -hmm. And so we were all standing around getting in our gear and we had to wait about 45 minutes and then to walk out onto the red carpet. And it was just, uh, it was just amazing. And then the next day after the movie premiere, so we were up till, you know, 10 o'clock at night, we did three troops in a day. And then the next day we woke up at like five in the morning met downstairs and got into these four wheel drive <laughs> forerunners and went out into the desert to see the filming locations, which was just absolutely amazing. And it was, also, it was incredible was amazing to see the star Wars movie locations, but Jordan is just a beautiful uh, place. It, yeah. It's amazing. So let me, uh, so before I go any further, I want to show you, um, I have a picture that I could share with you. Um, Probably the most amazing picture that I've ever had taken of me. Here, check this out. Uh, done. 
So can you see that? Wow, yeah, that's amazing. Okay, so here I am, a new member, and that's not a green screen. You know, like I have trouble looking at this picture. Like I'm like, <laughs> like I look at it and go, did, did really? I was standing right there. Like that's the most amazing thing ever. Yeah, I have you know, a photo I, like that, but it's uh, edited. <laughs> it's, ed <laughs> it's edited, right? Yeah, I I actually made a you know a backdrop of the Death Star. You know, after I had my first uh, uh, my first you know picture taken with in my uh, in my armor and everything. And then there's a uh, there's another one here with all of us. Yeah, I think uh, you have the group photo framed behind you. Oh yeah, you could see that. Yeah, that's the yeah, that's one of the of all the TKs. But there's one here. Check this out. How about that one? Wow, that is a epic photo. <laughs> right. Okay. So so Joe Montello is Darth Vader. Uh, I'm the one in the kind of the TK in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Chris Fian is on my right. Gotcha. Um, and then uh, Anthony Garzone is up there. Is the other TK kind of over by the snow trooper? And uh, Ted Moy is the um, is the AT 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 driver. And uh, then the other people are from the um, from the Florida garrison. Wow. And I mean, just I, I mean, come on, right? Yeah. When in your life are you going to be able to stand on the desert dune and oh, take yeah. pictures was, in uh, stormtrooper gear? That was a once in a lifetime opportunity for you it's, guys. Yeah, I mean, so rewarding and epic, all in the same one. And I'll never forget Chris. The first time I met Chris um, was in the lobby of the hotel because he actually ended up flying out afterwards. He didn't, wasn't on the flight with me, Joe, Ted, and uh, and Anthony. And um, so I got to meet him late at night after a very long flight in the hotel. And um, and I remember talking to him as it was all happening. Cause I knew he, I knew he was, you know, a long time member and, and everything. And, and I was like, how does this compare? And he goes, it doesn't. He goes, you have no idea what you're experiencing right now. Ooh, He's like, this is the, and that's coming from Chris. Yeah. Who's done some amazing stuff. Me and Chris, cause for Lucas stuff, like, I, like we said in ours, uh, kind of always get picked because of our size. Sure. I mean, we've done some crazy things from Spike TV commercials to every Good Morning America meeting, everybody from the, but yeah, that, that had the, you, you, had, you, you had the best one. Yeah. I, I, you know, and I, and trust me, it's not lost on me, you know, and, and I'm going to keep, I'm, it's like, I feel like, okay, well now that I got to do that, I have to keep trooping. Like I have to do this mm -hmm. and when everything starts back up, I'm going to be still out there doing troops, making troops. Cause I live up in the Hudson Valley. So I live a fairly far distance away from mm -hmm. you guys. I'm almost the pretty much the farthest North wow. uh, that you can get. Yeah. I'm up in Kingston. So Kingston, New York. So um, I could a actually reached out to some of the, uh, uh, Garrison Excelsior people because I could just as easy go up to Albany as easy as go down to the city. Well, that's cool. Hey, it's always cool to try trooping with some other uh, garrisons too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, well, because you knew and you've trooped a handful of times, although the Jordan troop was like you did two months worth of troops. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, which brings me to a, uh, another good point. What are you doing and what's the garrison doing for this situation that we're in? Well, um, one of the things we're doing is a, is a virtual troop. Uh, it's something that started up um, towards the beginning of all of this, uh, you know, everybody's starting to stay home and being quarantined and all of that stuff. And, um, you know, one day I was on my way home from work and I was like, you know, I got to reach out to Chris and, and see what he thinks about some kind of doing something on Facebook or something. And, um, so I reached out to him and he's like, yeah, give me a call when you get home. And I was like, all right, cool. So I reached out to him. We, we spoke for about an hour and I told him, I said, you know, what about something if we, you know, if there's a Facebook page that, um, you know, during a certain time we all just upload, you know, videos, go live, do, you know, upload pictures, something like that, just to give all of us something to do because now there's nothing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, we got these great costumes and great armor sets that are sitting there, you know, and, 
and we can't do what we're supposed to do. And that's, you know, help out charities and raise money and stuff. So, um, so, you know, he liked the idea and then about a week went by and I didn't hear anything from him. And all of a sudden he texts me and he says, Hey, we're going to go live soon next weekend. What do you think? And, you know, and, and it turned into this whole, um, you know, virtual troop and we got our second one coming up on the, uh, on May 2nd. So, um, I'm looking forward to it. I love it. I think it's such a great idea. Yeah. It gives me something to do for an entire day. And, you know, yeah, I get my eye rolls from my kids and my <laughs> wife, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah. Chris came to me after he spoke to you and then he spoke to Bill and he told me the idea and I thought it was just a great idea. But that's also why it's good to have some new blood <laughs> around to give some good ideas. Yeah, I, I just I, I don't honestly I have an hour and about an hour drive back home from work from uh, Goshen where I work at Legoland. And I was thinking about it on that way home and I was like, man, you know, there's got to be something we could do like virtually something live online that we can all do. And, um, and that, and this is what it's come to. And it's, I think it's amazing, especially yeah. this thing. This is great. I mean, we all get to, you know, people, you know, who don't know what goes on. This is a good way for people to see. Yep. And it came from your idea from the oh, well, all, 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 all these little other ideas throughout. Yeah, definitely. No, it's definitely a, a team effort. I mean, you guys putting it all together and I was just, I'm just happy to be able to be part of it all. You guys are doing a fantastic job at it. No, oh, you too. What, uh, so what videos did you do for the first virtual troop? Um, well, there's a video, uh, that I posted early. It was actually before that day, Chris wanted to get us started. Uh, so there's a, there's a, a video of a TK with a remote control car. Yeah, I, know. I don't know if you saw that little. Yeah. So I got a, I, I, yeah, I got an original um, uh, Tamiya Hornet racing car that I had when I was a kid, and my wife bought it for me a couple of years ago, and I just thought it would be pretty cool uh, for a 1970s spaceman to be driving a 1980s uh, remote control car, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. well, it was really fun to see everyone's creativity for the first one and all the different videos. So I'm, yeah, I'm, and I I, I made one people. with uh, I made one with my son. We were playing frisbee. I you saw. Know, I'm too. sure I'm sure no one's seen a stormtrooper throw a frisbee before, so <laughs> it just seemed kind of fun to do. Yeah, it was definitely the first time that people saw a stormtrooper do a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, it's amazing. Awesome, man. Well. Thank you very much for uh, participating and doing an interview and letting all the people who aren't in the 501st know a little bit about what goes on under the helmet. No, yeah, definitely, uh, man. Thank you for doing it. I appreciate it. Cool, man. Uh, so, yeah, we'll talk later. Uh, actually, I'll probably talk to you about uh, a mask. I didn't know you did custom masks. That's cool. Oh, yeah. I, get, I got all kinds. You want a SpongeBob mask? I, I, <laughs> I can do that. Too. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and uh, have a good day. All right. See ya. Take care.